So in this film, we're going to be looking at three basic ways of uh, turning an image into black and white in Photoshop. And then we're looking at three more advanced ways to turn an image into black and white in Photoshop. OK, so the first thing is when you're trying to find uh, the correct look and feel to your black and white conversions, I would always encourage you to have a variety of images. Um, so I've got basically a even image. Uh, as far as it's got a good highlight, a good black, it's got grey tonality, even though there's a colour image, it has a good tonality across the whole photograph. Then I've got a very low key, almost a monochromatic image, even though it's still colour. Then I've got a very low key image, which is more my style of lighting for black and white, um, but it is uh, bigger and broader as far as the spread, so more like a daylight quality. And then I've basically got an average image, <laughs> in fact, I've stole this from my wife's uh, kind of camera shop that she did in Venice, um, but it'll do for now as a kind of a tester. So finding the best way is the key thing and you'll soon find it right. Right, so the three basic ways. The first one uh, is image in mode and going into grayscale. Now the negative of this, it basically um, turns it into a grayscale image. So it's no longer a color uh, image. It's thrown away all the color in the information that we're working on a standard JPEG open file. We it's not a raw file. It's not a converted into a smart object file here. So what we just did was throw all the information away no matter what. The grayscale is basically good and bad. Bad if you're going out to a photo lab. Good or very good, I should say, if you're going out to commercial print. So when it goes to the likes of a brochure or into a magazine article, it's much better to have a grayscale image because you can guarantee it is going to be pure black and white with no kind of color tone it's mixed up in of, as it were. So um, the negative with it, all kind of adjustments that we're doing, they're going to need a slight tweak in in levels or curves to bring back the brightness and the lightness and so on. So good and bad, as I said, that's just turning it into a basic image, going image mode and going into gray uh, to grayscale. Remember, because we haven't converted this image into any form of smart a smart object, we are throwing that information away, so we can't get it back. The next way would be to the likes of uh, image adjustments and going into color hue and saturation here. And that would be just grabbing the saturation button and just sliding it all the way to the left hand side. That gets rid of all our color. Um, obviously, if you chose one specific color to the um, selection here, so we just chose the reds and I did the same thing, it would just take out any of the reds that are within the image. But of course, what we're really looking for is to take all the color out of the image if we are trying to create that monochromatic. And then the third way and my preferred way would be going into image adjustments and into channel mixer. Uh, channel mixer, the first thing we need to do is basically click onto the monochromatic little box there. That is then going to change the settings of the red, green, blue, but we need to change these even more, in fact, to get to more of a old style, uh, kind of in larger, multi-grade printing quality. And I want to get to kind of a grade three. So this is going to be in the red, 78, and then uh, 22, and then zero for the blue. And then basically what we've got here, these add up to 100 and no more. So basically pressing OK to that, and that has created a good solid black and white image. And in fact, that is the, the one that I would create into an action. It's my first get out of jail free monochrome adjustment. But as I was saying to you, I pretty much have to bring in the likes of a levels command, control L, command L on a Mac, and then go in and basically adjust the brightness and darkness to uh, uh, make up for what the adjustment has just happened to as far as the color uh, by using the kind of the channel mixer and things really. Okay, so those were our kind of three basic ways. Uh, let's look at three more advanced ways to actually kind of uh, change uh, an image into monochrome within Photoshop. Well, the first way would actually go into fill filter and open it in fact in camera raw filters this has existed within Photoshop for a couple of um, series now, ever since CC. And like you might have seen uh, in the conversion from the RAW, we can either use the sat saturation dial here, 
we could go into the presets and choose one of the look and feels that um, Adobe themselves have actually pre-built. Or we could go into my preferred method once more of kind of dialing down all the colors in uh, the HSL set setting in here and then basically allowing us to adjust the skin tone, reds and oranges, of course, just pressing OK with that one. And then basically what this is, this is a, a kind of a raw uh, a conver conversion now as such. So if we just step backwards, more advanced, of course, once more would be to use the likes of an adjustment layer. So whereas we've been working up until now on a negative, so basically a destructive um, element to a photograph, because we were using it directly on the image when we went to the grayscale, the black and white conversions and so on. We didn't talk about that, but there is a black and white conversion from the adjustment channels here. Uh, in the same way as we can actually click on an adjustment layer here. So for instance, if we wanted to use the human saturation method, but have a control, we could actually just go along um, to select uh, the right um, I icon, i.e. this, this one here, and then basically in the same way, dial it out. But as you can see now, it's an adjustment layer above the other layer. So even when we kind of uh, accept it, we can actually lose it by just kind of clicking it on and off in exactly the same way as we saw the channel mixer by just kind of picking up the same thing and uh, we could actually move it into monochrome. Same thing applies, 78, 22, 0. And that is exactly the same result as we just had beforehand. We still need to go in and actually make the levels correction that we were doing before. But in the same way, I can add a levels uh, a a correction or a curve. So I can just go back in again. And that is actually putting it above and things really. So think about the different way that you want to actually achieve your look and feel. Let's just delete those now for a second. And let's look at the third method, which for some is their preferred way. I, I, I think it's too com complicated for many photographers. And that would be just going up into filter and selecting, sorry, into uh, image adjustments and looking at the gradient map. And by here, uh, this gives a very, very strong monochromatic. Um, I can obviously change the way that the gradient works. Basically, it, cho it chooses the first preset by design. As you click through the other ones, it will give you different effects. As you can see here, it's moving on a, gra a gradient mapping as we're going through. Um, but by, by the design, the first preset uh, is kind of the pure black at the one end and white at the other, as you can see here on the graph. Um, but then we can start to uh, lighten or dark or darken the image in different areas. So for instance, you might want to actually um, bring the mid-tone down a little bit more, or you might want to light, uh, lighten it up more. So it just allows you to kind of really change the way that the whole image is basically worked. And it will make quite a drastic kind of uh, a, diff a difference to the image. But I often find photographers who choose this meth method are fiddling rather than having a constructed workflow to the black and white. And if you're going to go down the gradient editor, I would definitely encourage you to make some actions up of different styles so that you kind of fuss more or I should say fuss less with the actual gradient editor itself because you can just get lost for hours uh, kind of fiddling and you want structure instead of actually with, n with no control. So that is three basic ways to monochrome and three more advanced ways within monochrome as well.